Hey everybody, welcome back to the Space News Pod. This is a show about SpaceX, NASA, and spaceflight. And today's episode is about the Starship IFT-4 flight and also subsequent flights after that. Um, we saw the success of IFT-1, IFT-2, and the most successful flight so far, IFT-3. They did some interesting things in IFT-3. Uh, one of them is the hatch, which is used for Starlink satellites. That's they open up the hatch like a Pez dispenser, shoot out Starlink satellites into orbit, and then well, they cash in on those satellites because it's a service that SpaceX provides to rural areas where people can't get high speed internet. And this hatch door was it kind of went okay. Uh, I talked about it in the last video, it was okay. I had a little little hiccup while it was closing, but altogether, it was a success. Now, that's important because we have to talk about something that Gwyn Shotwell talked about, who is the COO of SpaceX, works hand in hand with Elon Musk, knows exactly what's going on with Starship at all times. And she just recently was on a paddle on the uh, satellite conference and something really interesting. She said, so this is a timeline for IFT4. She said, SpaceX will be ready to launch in about six weeks. That's a month and a half. That's really fast. Most of these launches take half a year, four to five months. If they can be ready in six weeks, this is going to be incredible because Elon Musk has talked about having nine launches of Starship this year. And if they can turn these around in a month and a half, I can see that actually happening. This is a huge deal because before they only had uh, clearance to do five launches per year. And now they're trying to up the ante to nine next year. They're probably going to go up to 30 knowing SpaceX and building on the success of one, two, three, four, five. They're going to keep building on all of the successes of these starship launches going forward. So she says right now that the teams are still reviewing the data from IFT four. And that also remember the bay door, the hatch door, they're not going to have satellites on board IFT-4. I thought they were going to do maybe a dummy satellite in IFT-4. I knew they were going to do another hatch test, but I wasn't sure about the uh, about some dummy satellites. That's where I was kind of conflicted because they have so many other things that they have to take care of, so many other things that they have to work on, um, including possibly another uh, propellant transfer. I'm not 100% sure about that because we don't have the data from the propellant transfer. They said it's successful, but was it 100% successful or was it 99%? Su We're not 100% sure. So are they going to be doing another transfer, a propellant transfer for IFT4? Possibly, possibly. Um, just to make sure that they can uh, use that for the Artemis program. And if you're not familiar, the Artemis program is NASA's next program to send people to the surface of the moon. Very important thing. And SpaceX will be landing those people using the HLS Starship. So this propellant transfer is super important because they have to transfer propellant in orbit from a tanker Starship to a flying moon Starship, a lunar Starship, the HLS Starship, which they will land on the surface of the moon with astronauts on it. Then they'll do science all over the place on the moon. So it's going to be, uh, it's up in the air about the propellant transfer, but it's possible. Now, since Gwen said six weeks, we know that uh, we could possibly get a bunch of Starlink and Starship flights this year. I don't know when they're going to start launching Starlinks, but more than likely at the end of the year. Uh, but Gwen said that the goal of the Starship this year is to reach orbit, deploy satellites, and recover both stages. So that means... They're building the second tower at Starbase right now. I believe that's going to be the catch tower. Right now, they cannot. There's no way. There's no reason for them to use the current tower as a catch tower. Anything that happens to their launch tower right now, it's going to put, set them back a year, six months to a year. So there's no reason for them to do that. What they have to do is build on the success of the Tower 1 for the tower two, build it out. So there's just catch capabilities, make sure that the catching is perfect. And then from there, launch from tower one 
catch on tower two, transfer the booster back to uh, the production facility, scrub it off, get it ready for the next launch, fix up whatever needs to be fixed. Same with the ship, full orbit, come back down to Starbase, Texas. It's going to be impressive when they catch one, a 250 foot tall booster, huge, bigger, like wider than your house. Think about your house right now. How long does it take you to do a lap around that? That's that's as big as a starship. It's 30 feet in diameter, nine meters. It's a gigantic thing. Also 250 feet tall. It's massive. The thing is a skyscraper. And they're going to be landing this at Starbase. Tower number two. Now, according to Gwyn, they're going to recover both stages. Now, if they're going to be doing a tower catch, they're going to have to really speed up Tower 2's production. They could possibly get it done in six months. Possibly. Um, But it might be later this year. So what they're going to do in that meantime is they're going to land the booster precisely in the Gulf of Mexico. They're going to orbit the Starship and possibly land the Starship precisely maybe in the Gulf of Mexico, but more than likely not. Uh, they have a bunch of, um, in the, the FAA did an environmental review for um, the subsequent launches of Starship, IFT4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and all of them were going to be landing in the Indian Ocean. So we have a little bit of information about that. And right now we know that it's not expected for the ship to uh, survive the landing in the Indian Ocean. It's probably going to break up in orbit. It's probably going to burn up or something is going to happen and it's going to blow up in the Indian Ocean. The FAA had to take care of that. They had to work with SpaceX and they had to work, um, you know, together to figure out if it's going to cause any damage to the Indian Ocean. And what they found out is that it's not going to do any damage. Not not much damage, actually. Um, most of the ship will sink to the bottom of the ocean and uh, the the wildlife the sea creatures, the fish, et cetera, will not be harmed. So from what we know right now, SpaceX is going to do a bunch of launches this year, possibly a catch, land in the Indian Ocean with the ship, land in the Gulf of Mexico with a booster. And I believe IFT 4 or 5, they're probably going to do um, a successful booster landing. Uh, they looked really great last time. They're really close. So I'm assuming what they can do with hardware and software, they probably upgraded the hardware in the booster and uh, software upgrades as well. So they could more than likely land the booster in the Gulf of Mexico, soft landing in IFT4 or IFT5. Um, And then the ship, it's going to take them a little bit longer. So I'm assuming uh, IFT6, 7, maybe 8, but getting reentry nailed is very important as well. Very, very important. So Starship has to get uh, the reentry and the orbit down pat before they can do a soft landing. And once they get the uh, uh, reentry and the deorbit um, figured out, then the reentry and the the deorbit uh, will lead them into the Gulf of Mexico or and the Gulf of, into the um, Indian Ocean softly. Right now, it's gonna blow up. <laughs> like that's where we're at right now. This thing's gonna blow up. And we know it's going to be a rud. It's going to be a rapid, uh, uh, unscheduled. Actually, it might be a scheduled uh, disassembly, but the rapid unscheduled disassembly. But they may schedule it by blowing it up on purpose because they may run out of fuel or, you know, whatever it is at this point. But they need to get it in orbit. That's what they plan on doing. That's what uh, Shotwell said. So we're looking forward to the IFT4 flight. And we're looking forward to, uh, I want to see, I want to know what you think about it. I want you to think about Gwen talking about this. Um, six weeks? Do you think it's possible? And this isn't Elon time that we're talking about. Elon time is like when he says six weeks, we're like, okay, dude. Six weeks. All right, bro. Um, we're thinking more like if he says six weeks, we're like four months. Elon, bro. <laughs> does he get, Does he own a watch? I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But Gwen says six weeks. Uh, the teams are working on the data from IFT3, um, and they're working now. SpaceX is also working with the FAA um, because there was a, you know, after the IFT3 flight, things blew up, and there's an incident report. SpaceX SpaceX has to work with the FAA 
in order to fix the things that went wrong. And then the FAA has to tell them, okay, cool. Good job. Good job fixing the things that blew up or something wasn't working properly. So good job. Do that. And then IFT4 will be cleared for flight once the FAA gives them a flight license. So lots of things happening at Starbase. Uh, lots of testing happening in the next uh, two weeks, two, three weeks. And if Gwen is going to be right about the six weeks thing, uh, they're going to rush this thing through. There's going to be some cryo tests. There's going to be some pressure tests. There's going to be some static fires of the booster and the ship. Everything is going to be bonkers for the next month. And there's going to, there's going to be a lot of activity down there. So again, let me know what you think about everything down in the comments below. Also, join the pod squad. Come on, sign up, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, help this video out. Let's reach up more people. Um, if you join the pod squad, if you subscribe to the channel, not only will you get this channel, but YouTube will show you other space flight channels. Uh, so I get a little bit out of it. You get to watch some of my videos, but you may find another creator that you like more than me, which is great. I, I want that. I want you to be excited about space flight. So if you subscribe to this channel and like this video, YouTube will see that. And also if you comment too, YouTube will see that and send you more spaceflight creators in your feed and SpaceX and NASA um, videos too. So stuff that you haven't seen before. So try it out. All right, that's it for today. Thanks everybody. Take care of yourselves and each other. Join the pod squad and I will see you in the next one.